Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. And in today's video, we are still continuing Naruto Polaris Shippuden. What if Hanabi Hyuga was born first? Part 16. As always, if you're new to the channel or if you're a regular and you like what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. So you can say that this is the final stretch, if you will, in the Naruto Polaris series. Uh, like many Naruto series, there are debates on if I will or if I won't continue into the Boruto era. And while for a lot of these series I do want to try to, it won't be in the near future and I'll briefly explain why. And it's not really a long explanation, it's mainly because Boruto is still an ongoing story. So there's a lot that hasn't come out yet that we still need to learn. A lot of it still hasn't been adapted into the anime, we still have the ongoing manga. So I'm trying to wait until Boruto hits that time skip part to where I can really start getting into the Boruto era projects as a lot of them will need their own changes and their own interpretations. So yes, Naruto Polaris will continue into the Boruto era, but it will be really different and we'll have to wait and see how things turn out. Also, our final parts will go from part 16 to part 21, so there will be six final parts in total for the Shippuden part of this series as we go into the war arc and the overall ending of our story. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's story in and of itself. Naruto, Polaris, Shippuden, what if Hanabi Hyuga was born first? Part 16. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Following the events of Payne's attack, the Hidden Leaf would be in disarray. While they were grateful for their heroes, there would be much in the terms of repairs that would need to be taken into account. Tsunade would be in a brief coma, as she had used much of her power in order to help heal and protect those in the Hidden Leaf Village. In the meantime, the nation's Daimo, or rather, the Lord of the Nation, would have a decision at hand, deciding who would serve as the temporary Kage, or maybe even the future sixth Hokage, in light of the recent events. Many on the council would speak, and many would have their opinions, among them being the likes of Donzo. However, unlike in the original timeline, things would be different. For one, Jiraiya would still be very much alive. Under normal circumstances, Jiraiya would not take the title of being a leader, or of being the Hokage. It just simply wasn't in his nature. However, there were times when even Jiraiya had to be serious. And knowing the likes of who Danzo truly was, and of his motives and schemes, he would not allow for the Hidden Leaf to be under his influence. However, Donzo was not one to give up so easily. I believe that it would be wise for the council to reconsider. While yes, Jiraiya is a powerful and formidable shinobi with a strong lineage, may we not forget it has been the decision of that lineage that has led to the destruction of our village. Tsunade, student of Hiruzen, the third Hokage, who was student of the first and of the second. It is because of their ideology and because of their views that the leaf has been far too lax and has been far too complacent. We need strong leadership. Leadership like yours, Donzo, Dry would say. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, I know for certain that in the midst of the chaos and everything that was happening, your men seemed to be conveniently absent. What are you insinuating, Jiraiya? Nothing at all. I don't believe you're a traitor. But at the same time, 
I'm not one to beat around the bush. It's obvious to me that you have an agenda that you wish to fulfill. You talk about the lineage of the people who have been trained, and yet there is a reason to why it continues. Because unlike you, we actually imbue the will of fire. We are the ones who carry Konoha on its back. In the end, you may have love for the hidden leaf, but when it's time for the rubber to meet the road, you have a funny way of showing it. You are one to talk, Jiraiya. A man who shortcomes his responsibilities. Why, if you were as noble and as righteous as you claim to be, then where were you after the Nine Tails attack? When that boy would have needed a father figure in his life, you were nowhere to be found. And on three separate occasions, we have offered you the title of Hokage, and you have turned it down. So why is it any different? Do you only seem to care whenever I am brought up? No, Jiraiya. You talk about those who embody the will of fire. If anything, I hold it stronger than you. While you gallivant around the nations, doing as you please, writing your filth. I have been the one carrying the burdens of the hidden leaf. I have been the one who has stayed in the shadows for far too long. And yet do I receive any praise, any thanks? No, not from the likes of you. You, student of my friend. You who follow in the ideology. You're all fine with sitting on your high perches. You're all fine with being the self-righteous. But when it's time to get your hands dirty, when it's time to actually put in the necessary work to do what needs to be done, you seem to always be the one that's missing Jiraiya. Where are you when you are needed most? You might have been here today, but you could just as easily be gone tomorrow. There would be much more heated discussion that would go back and forth. Many were wondering what to do. It was not lost on anyone of Donzo and his shady antics and his tactics, but at the same time he did bring up valid points. While Jiraiya was well respected in the Hidden Leaf, it was not lost on anyone that he tended to be more lax than others, and this was a crucial time in the village's history. Now was not the time to be playing favorites or sentiment. Now it was left to the Daimo to decide. While he had taken into account the arguments for both sides, ultimately he had to take into account the stronger case. The simple fact of the matter was that Jiraiya, like Tsunade, was one of the legendary Sanin. He had the necessary knowledge and he was equipped. Also, he had been offered many times, and to Jiraiya's own credit, he turned down not because of just wanting to do his own thing, but because he did so for the good of the Hidden Leaf. Sure, he could have taken the title if he truly wanted, but he knew that at the time he wasn't needed, there were much better options. He would admit that there were a lot of mistakes that were made on his end, and looking back at it now, maybe he should have taken up the role a lot sooner. But even still, this was just temporary. After all, Tsunade was not dead, she was only in a coma, and when she awoke, Jiraiya had full intent on giving her back the duty of Hokage. This was more or less just a temporary gig, so there was no need for everyone to be all concerned. If it were required that it needed to be permanent, they could make discussions from there. But with the upcoming 5 Kage Summit, there was more to be concerned about than petty squabbles. Everyone would be in agreement, and the Lord of the Land of Fire would decree that Jiraiya would be the temporary Hokage, or the sixth Hokage candidate that would take the current place while Tsunade was recovering. Naruto in the meantime would be helping all throughout the Hidden Leaf. Naruto as a ranked Chunin had a lot more responsibility, being asked to help coordinate with others and using his shadow clones to assist whenever possible. There was also Dosu who was helping out as well along with Sakura. Ever since everything that happened, the two had just been hanging out together. Of course, they still argued as much as anyone else, although not as much. Hinata was helping Konohamaru readjust, 
After all, he was temporarily dead. And everyone else was getting along where they could. For Naruto, the biggest surprise came though when out of nowhere, he felt two arms wrap around him. He almost felt himself being thrown to the ground immediately as he looked and tried to see just who it was that had tackled him, only to find a rather familiar girl with long dark hair and those same lavender eyes. Looking into him, he was able to see that it was none other than Hanabi, who had just returned from her mission along with her family, only to see all of the damage that had happened in the hidden leaf. Of course, Hanabi used her Byakugan to find her sister and make sure everyone in the clan was well enough, but hearing what Naruto had been through and what had happened, she knew she had to come find him, as well as find her master Tsunade. Naruto assured her that everything was fine, but for Hanabi, she was almost inconsolable in a way. Hanabi knew that if she had been here in the Hidden Leaf, maybe she could have done something, anything. She blamed the ways of her clan, feeling as though it was because of their overprotectiveness and because of their rigidness that caused them to lose sight of what was truly important, the wellness of the village. It was because of this that Hanabi had known deep in her heart, even though she was still going to become the head of the Hyuga clan, the one thing she wanted to do now more than anything was to help and make sure that she could take care of as many as she could. With Tsunade's current condition, they would need all the help that they could get. Of course, Naruto as he continued assisting others in the rebuild would be a bit surprised when he was called into the new makeshift office for the village leaders, seeing Kakashi there along with Yamato as well as Jiraiya, Naruto wondered what was going on. It would then be explained that because of recent events, Jiraiya was taking over as a temporary Hokage, and that at the upcoming 5 Kage summit, Naruto and Kakashi were going to be serving as his bodyguards. The main reason for Naruto coming was because of the fact that he had fought against Pain, and Jiraiya believed that if the Akatsuki were to make a move, Naruto's safest place would be with Jiraiya. Of course, Naruto didn't like the idea of everyone trying to watch over him and baby him, but this was more practical. Naruto would be at a secluded area in the Five Kage Summit. He would be surrounded by some of the most powerful shinobi in the world. Honestly, with all things considered, and with the recent news going around that the Eight Tails Jinchuriki had been captured, although as to who had done it was being kept under wraps, Naruto was going to be needed now more than ever. Of course, in the meantime, there would still be a familiar meeting. Three shinobi from the Hidden Cloud Village would arrive to the Hidden Leaf, trying to gain any information that they could about said Uchiha. It would be Kari, Omui, and Samui. They would go searching around for information. This would lead them to meeting Naruto and Hanabi. However, unlike before, Naruto was not the type of person that would just sit around and take a beating. You see, this version of Naruto is a lot different from our own. While Naruto had grown up with Sasuke and Hanabi, and while the three of them were good friends all enough, the friendship between Sasuke and Naruto is not the end all be all. Remember, at the Valley of the End, Naruto did not fight Sasuke, it was Hanabi. Naruto and Sasuke didn't fight for the first time until the events of the Tenchi Bridge arc. Because of this, that was the first time the two had ever gone all out in terms of power. And with Naruto having taken this training more seriously, they were relatively even. I guess in a short way of speaking, there wasn't this gap between Naruto and Sasuke like in the original. There was no inferiority complex, at least to a certain degree. If anything, the person that Sasuke considered to be a true threat was actually Hanabi, as she had the growing power to match him. And there was also the rivalry between the Uchiha and the Hyuga, to some extent. You could say that in a weird, ironic twist, 
Naruto is actually in more of the third wheel position of this trio. So even still, while he had much respect, and while he didn't want Sasuke to be killed, at the same time, he wasn't in the mood for taking a beating for Sasuke. They wouldn't give up any information, and the Cloud Ninja would leave rather disheartened. But there was also another reason. In the meantime, the Five Kage Summit would be underway. To say that things would be tense would be an understatement. They would meet in the Land of Fire. There, it would also be where the leadoff to the Five Kage Summit would begin. After the meeting with the village representatives in the Land of Fire, Jiraiya, Kakashi, and Naruto would set off and make their way to the Land of Iron. In doing so, they would meet along with the other Kages and their representatives, along with their attendants. Only two would be allowed at a time. And in the meeting, as it was oversaw by the leader of the samurai, Mifune, there was to be no fighting in the summit. There would be Jiraiya, representing the Hidden Leaf as Hokage, with Kakashi Hatake and Naruto Uzumaki. Next, from the Sand Village, Gara the Kazekage, with Tamari and Kankuro. From the Hidden Cloud Village, the Raikage A, along with his attendants, C and Darui. From the Hidden Mist, the Mizukage, Mei, along with her attendants, Chojuro of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, and Ao. And finally, from the Hidden Stone, Onoiki, along with Akasuchi and Kurosuchi, his granddaughter. As they had all met, it would not take long for things to break down, as the Raikage would immediately point to Jiraiya, bringing up the insolence of not taking down their rogue shinobi and for the insult of having Sasuke attack and take his brother in Killer B, the Eight Tails Chinchuriki. There were many who were in a stern and in an uproar, mainly being the Raikage, as well as Anoiki himself. Naruto was slowly getting more and more annoyed, especially at the Raikage and the Suchikage. Kakashi and Jiraiya have warned for him to try to keep his peace and to not go off the deep end. However, even still, Naruto had a hard time doing so. Eventually, though, it became very clear that Naruto was irritated. The Raikage looking over and seeing that Naruto didn't seem to have a care in the world, causing him to snarl and slam his fist on the table. Is this meeting too boring for you, a eh, Nine Tails? Naruto put his pinky in his ear to clean it out, almost as if he didn't register. Excuse me, I know you can hear me. I'm talking to you. Oh, are you now? That's funny. I have a name. It's called Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Not Nine Tails. <laughs> well, Naruto, this meeting is also about you. You are the last Chinchuriki, are you not? What's your thoughts on everything? Oh, you want my opinion? My opinion is that a lot of you, you're just a bunch of idiots. Not you, Gara, or you. Uh, Mizukage, you're actually pretty cool. Hmm. He seems to be wise and pretty cute. What do you mean, Naruto? Gara would say. Do you have a problem with us? The Raikage would ask. Indeed. In fact, you look quite familiar. Almost like I've seen you before. No, but you've probably seen my father. Minato Namikaze. What? The son of the Yellow Flash? It's you. Although, I do see the resemblance. But your last name is Uzumaki. So, he must have married an Uzumaki girl. 
clever of him not to give you his last name, knowing full well that you would have been a target for us. Yeah, I kind of figured that. My old man was looking out for me. But even still, from what I can see now, you all are nothing to really appraise about as Kage. You insolent! What? I'm not going to sit here and try to make excuses for Sasuke's actions. Even I can't understand why he's done what he's done. But even still, looking at how all of you behave, I can't really say that I'm either for or against him. And what's that supposed to mean? Do you sympathize with the enemy? No, but the way you're acting, you're all no better. I've kept quiet for a while now. Naruto, be mindful of what you say. Kakashi would look over to him seriously. Naruto nodded, but he wasn't in the mood for playing games. This Five Kage Summit, it's supposed to be about dealing with the Akatsuki, and it's supposed to be for the betterment of everyone here. Yet all you seem to do is be able to fight amongst yourselves. Truthfully, I say it's rather shameful. The only ones here who seem to be making any progress is Jiraiya, Gara, and the Mizukage. But you, Raikage, and you, Suchikage, I find you both to be annoying and tedious. Jiraiya looked at Naruto rather stunned. When did he get so smart? And when was he so literate? Hmm. Was it really the influence of that girl? Has she really changed him that much? Why you? It's true and you know it. Raikage. After all of the affronts that the Hidden Clout Village has caused, many that have harmed those in the Hidden Leaf and those precious to me, you of all people are the most hypocritical. You talk about the loss of your brother. Well, there was also a brother that was lost in the Hidden Leaf, who died senselessly. And I know that this order would have had to come from you. And yet even still, you didn't seem to care at all. And just what are you speaking of? You don't remember the Hyuga clan incident? You wish to bring up something from the past? It's only ancient history. Naruto slammed his fist on the desk causing it to break. Ancient history? Oh yes, because it's only ancient history when it's an inconvenience to you. It's only ancient history when it's a problem that you don't want to deal with. I'll have you know, I'm friends with the son of the man that was killed because of you and your petty pride. Despite the peace treaty that was made between our villages, you and your shinobi caused yet another incident, and you had the audacity to threaten war. My friend lost his father, one of the few people that he truly loved and cared for, and you don't even seem to care about that. And also, your incident almost took away a person that was very dear to me. And I'll have to say, just being in the same room with you right now, it makes me sick. And yet even still, my village swallowed their pride. We kept the peace despite everything that you have done. And you have the audacity to threaten one of our shinobi because of an inconvenience to you and someone that you care for. But yet even still, I understand. I understand what it means to feel that pain. The pain of loss, of losing someone that's precious to you. We've all been through it, even more. And yet now, you still continue on in your pointless fighting. And you, Suchikage, you of all people, you employed the Akatsuki, you used them for your own ends. Did any of you have any care for what was going on? From what I'm told, the Hidden Cloud Village has two Chinjuriki, and yet you've only called this meeting because your brother the Eight Tails was taken. Well what about the Two Tails? And as for you, Suchikage, what about the Five and the Four Tails? 
And even for you, Mizukage, what about the whereabouts of your Jinchuriki? Have any of you been doing anything this whole time? All you do is fight and argue amongst yourselves. And whenever something that comes along that you don't like, you're ready to threaten war at the drop of a hat. You put other people's lives at risk because of your own foolishness. Because of you, H and Cherokee have been lost, and I am the only one that remains. And even now, even with the threat of the end of the world, with everything at stake, you all still continue to fight. If this is truly how Kage conduct themselves, then I must say, I find it to be truly shameful. I'm done here. Naruto stormed out of the room in anger, the Raikage yelling obscenities. However, as Naruto turned back, he looked towards the Raikage with a serious expression. You can say anything you want about me. I don't really care. I'm not looking for a fight. And as far as Sasuke is concerned, the Hidden Leaf will deal with him. However, if you make any move against Sasuke, if you make any move against the Hidden Leaf, I won't hesitate to end you. As Naruto looked back, for a brief moment, for the briefest of moments, the Raikage and the Suchikage felt a cold shiver go down their spines. Because at that very moment, they didn't see Naruto Uzumaki. They saw Minato Namikaze, the hero of the Third Great Ninja War, the yellow flash of the hidden leaf. He was definitely his father's son, and not one to be taken lightly at all. As the five Kage summit resumed, Mifune would only look on and shaking his head. It seems that the young of the next generation have more sense than even the old. Well, I can't say that what the boy said was all too tactful. I can agree with the message. This is a meeting of serious priority, and yet you only bring your petty squabbles. I'm pretty sure that everyone in here, every village has wronged one another at some point. But we don't have time for this. Right now the world is at a critical juncture. If we don't come together now and make a stand, I fear that all will be lost. As the five Kage summit would resume, there would be another meeting taking place in the Hidden Leaf. Hanabi had just finished serving those who were injured, using her medical ninjutsu along with her Byakugan to pinpoint any injury or ailment and to help them with great efficiency. After it was over, she was meeting in an area with other members of the Konoha 11. As she arrived, she was surprised to see that everyone was gathered. Even Dosu had been invited. So I guess you could say that this was the Konoha 12 maybe? Or so on. Anyway, as everyone had been gathered together, after hearing the news of what Sasuke had done, the group had come together for one reason. It was decided that Sasuke couldn't be allowed to go on the way that he was. And at the same time, they also knew that if anyone should deal with Sasuke, it should be them. Shikamaru reasoned, if Sasuke were killed by members of the other villages, say the Cloud Village, who seemed to want his head, then he knew for a fact that Naruto, Hanabi, and most likely even Kakashi maybe, would want to retaliate, which would only lead to more retaliation, which would soon only lead to more bloodshed and violence, maybe even a potential war. Of course, that couldn't be allowed to happen, not on their hands. As such, they knew that moves were going to have to be made. It was going to be necessary if they were going to be able 
to combat the upcoming battle that was to come. Of course, they would have wanted Naruto to be here, but since he was at the Five Kage Summit, they brought in Hanabi, as she was also a member of Team 7, along with Dosu, who was slowly becoming a trusted friend. And after the sacrifice he had made during Pain's invasion, he was viewed as one of their own. The slate had been wiped clean, and Dosu was welcomed. Everyone had their own piece to say. Even Dosu spoke up. If I'm gonna be honest, I want revenge. I wanted to fight against Sasuke. I wanted to kill him. But I've come to see that holding all of that hatred and animosity inside, well, it only eats you up. It only tears you apart. Look, I wasn't born in this village. I can't say that my ties run deep like all of you. Although I am grateful that you've accepted me. What you choose to do with the Uchiha, I leave in your hands. I personally don't want to vote in the matter. However, if it's for defense of this village, and I have to stand against Sasuke, I will do what I must, even if it means I have to go all out against him. Although truthfully, I don't know if I could win. Maybe I can't. But if I have to take him down with me, I'll do so without hesitation. Sakura and Ino respectively, they had shed tears. Sakura more so than anyone else. Of course, Sakura had always had a crush on Sasuke. You all know this. But this version of Sakura was a lot different. Not just in terms of her moveset, of her skills and abilities, but because of practicality. You see, this version of Sakura was not a part of Team 7. She didn't go on the missions, she didn't grow with the team, she only could see Sasuke from afar. And what she saw was not good. Sasuke was becoming a criminal, breaking her heart slowly over time. Meanwhile, Dosu, someone who was once their enemy, had given his life to save her during Pain's attack. Because of this, she saw Dosu in a new light. Of course, she wasn't going to say this out loud. In public, they seemed like oil and water, but deep down there was something a bit more. But right now, Sakura, she was more sensible. Even though she didn't like the idea and she didn't want to kill Sasuke, she felt as though capture would be the best option. And that was the sentiment going around. Kill or capture. That was the two options. Ultimately, everyone turned to Hanabi. She thought about it for a moment. She thought about everything she had been through. She thought about how she had almost died at the Valley of the End. Shikamaru had heard about that situation. As in this timeline, Shikamaru was not a part of the Sasuke retrieval team. And now, because of this, everyone looked to her. She was the deciding factor. After thinking it over, Hanabi came to this decision. If possible, Sasuke should be captured, and he should be brought back to the Hidden Leaf. She didn't understand everything. She didn't understand why Sasuke had done what he had done. But she knew that things couldn't be this simple. Of course, Capturing Sasuke was not going to be easy, and they had to think, if Sasuke were going to make another move, where would it be, and how would be the best way to get him? However, it wouldn't be long for them to figure out where Sasuke was going. Because you see, Danzo did not go to the Five Kage Summit. No, Danzo stayed in the Hidden Leaf plotting and scheming his next plan. And because of this, it meant that the shadow of the Uchiha was not too far behind, as on the outskirts of the village, Sasuke, Karin, Suigetsu, and Jugo 
all waited. They were ready to make their move against Donzo. He would atone for his sins, and then the hidden leaf would follow. In the meantime, our masked man would make his appearance amongst that of the five Kage. Everyone looking up as Zetsu would announce his arrival. Naruto would rush into the room, with Kakashi and Jiraiya telling him to stay in place, as the masked man looked down upon all of them. None could see an expression, and no one knew what he was after. Greetings, Five Kage. I hope you're all doing well. He's a part of the Akatsuki. What is he doing here? My name is Madara Uchiha. And I have come here for one reason. I've come to ask that you hand over the Nine Tails. Of course, if he would come willingly, that would definitely save me the trouble. Dryer looked at him, as if we'd ever allow that to happen. The only way you're leaving with Naruto is if you kill every last single one of us here. Madara would look around the room, all five Kage and their attendants. <laughs> well, while that is an interesting threat, Jiraiya, I must decline for now, but I believe our paths will cross again, because if you're not going to hand over the Nine Tails willingly, then I have no choice. No choice in what? Myra looked up to the sky before looking back down upon the Kage. I declare. The Fourth Great Shinobi War. This concludes Naruto Polaris Shippuden What If Hanabi Hugo Was Born First, Part 16. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we will be continuing Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? Part 13. Also stay tuned in the afternoon as we'll be doing our Chainsaw Man anime review episode 5. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.